How much room for creativity is there in your business, in your industry, in your life? We're born creative, but our schools, companies, and pressures of society pull us away from our true creative capacity. And most of us go on to do absolutely nothing about it. But one individual refused to go along with the crowd, refused to do things same old, same old, refused to accept that we have to live without creativity in a modern, cookie-cutter, mass-marketed world. Josh Linkner was 13 when he began playing jazz professionally. He's still improvising today, but not only in smoky jazz clubs. An early internet visionary, Josh started four companies and sold three of them before he was 30, including one of the first web marketing agencies, Global Link New Media, in 1995. His most recent company, ePrize, has revolutionized an industry. Josh took the sleepy, old-fashioned world of sweepstakes and promotions and dared to be different. He created a new business model that services 74 of the top 100 brands and now does 300% more business than his nearest competitor. Through his creativity, Josh Linkner turned that industry upside down. Now he set his sights on the entire world of work. He's on a mission to make the world a more creative planet. Along the way, Josh and E-Prize have won just about every entrepreneurial award there is, including Red Herring's top 100 technology firms in North America, the Inc. 500 five years in a row, the number one fastest growing company on the Promo 100, and Fast Company's Fast 50 Reader's Choice. Josh has been named the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year, one of Crane's 40 Under 40, Automation Alley's CEO of the Year, the Inc. Magazine Entrepreneur of the Year finalist, and the Executive of the Year by the Detroit Executive Association. Josh's creativity continues to spread and has captured the attention of millions. He's been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Fast Company, Inc. Magazine, Ad Age, The Financial Times, Brand Week, USA Today, Fox Business, and CNBC. So get ready to have your thinking challenged. Get ready to let go of your preconceptions about the way business is done. Get ready to join Josh Linkner in the Creativity Fast Lane. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and give a big warm welcome to Josh Linkner. So why now? You might be thinking, it wasn't that important five years ago, or 10 years ago, or 20 years ago. Why now? Well, as I, as I said, the world has changed dramatically. For one, we're under intense commoditization. Advantages of the past have become commoditized. Everyone's playing catch up. It's like an arms race. Think about the information age. Even information itself has largely become commoditized with the invention of Google and Wikipedia. Next is speed. As we all know, the world is moving at a dramatic pace. Complete business cycles that used to last a decade or more are now happening in a matter of months. Barriers to entry have completely dropped. Used to be in the industrial age, if you had a great idea, you'd still need to build a factory and build distribution channels and raise capital. Nowadays, a kid in a college dorm room with a high-speed internet connection can launch Facebook and become a billionaire in 18 months. And finally, globalization, and more specifically, cost cutting. In the middle of recession, what do companies do? They cut the cost, right? They say, all right, we're going to cut our way to profitability. The problem is that's already been out of the system, and you can only cut your way so far. At some point, as a company, you need to invent and grow and innovate in order to win. In the new rules of engagement, the world is too complex and too fast to follow an operating manual to success. We all are going to need to tap in and innovate and improvise in order to win. We're going to go right to ground zero, right to the epicenter of creativity, which clearly is the British government. <laughs> known for their originality and uniqueness. Well, the British government recently did a study. The Ministry of Education did a study. And they did some tests for kids, how they identified, did they feel like they were creative or not? Were they creative, yes or no? So they asked this study to kids who were entering kindergarten, their equivalent of kindergarten. And they found out that 98% of children said, yeah, I'm creative. I'm a creative person. Well, they asked that same question to graduating seniors. What do you think the number was? Anybody? 50%? 30%? 2%. 2%. How does that happen? 
How does school take us from 98% of kids saying we're creative, we go through school, which is supposed to prepare us for life, and we end up with 2%. What is going on here? What's going on is that we don't grow into creativity, we grow out of it. Think back when you were a kid. There's no such thing as a cardboard box, right? It was a fort or a Barbie mansion or a pirate ship. We played for hours. You put a bunch of six-year-olds in a room with toys, hours and hours of endless imagination. If we're all in that same room, 45 seconds later, we're checking our Blackberries and our iPhones. So we start out in the world as these bright, vibrant, imaginative kids, and over time, our schools and our educational systems and our companies and our organizations kind of beat it out of us, don't they? And what ends up happening is we become the thing that we fear the most, grumpy adults. AKA our parents. And not the cool parents in the Viagra commercials. <laughs> so I want you to think about creativity for a second as a muscle. All humans have muscles. And if we exercise them, we go to the gym, we really work out, we will build muscle mass, any one of us, no matter how we were born. If we don't, what happens? They atrophy. They just don't work very much. So unfortunately, we're in a situation where most of us, this nation really, it's kind of scrawny. We're kind of scrawny. But I'm going to share some very specific techniques that you can take with you today, right out of here, the minute you leave, that will allow you to get pumped up. <laughs> Craig, thanks for shooting this picture earlier this morning. I was kind of, kind of getting ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to think about the number one for a second. One idea is all it takes to change your life, to change your career, to change your company. One idea is all it takes. And that one idea is inside each of you right now. So let's figure out how to bring it out. As you saw from the introduction, I'm a jazz guy. And jazz is a cool form of art in that it's real time. You can't go back and correct mistakes. And it's spontaneous creativity. It's improvisational. When you're playing jazz, 99% of the notes you make up as you go. And only 1% are on the written page. But that 1% is really important. Because that 1% tells the musicians important things, like here's the chord structure, here's the tempo, here's the key signature, here's some guideposts. So that scaffolding, if you will, enables creativity. It doesn't restrict it. There is a form of jazz called free jazz, which is horrendous, where there's no scaffolding, and it's just like a, it just sounds like a train wreck. So again, that little bit of guidance really helps people bring out their best creativity and work together as a group. What I started to realize having been in business now for 20 some years, is that there is no similar framework in the business world. If you think about it, there's business systems and processes for everything, right? How do you answer the phone? How do you set the alarm? How do you deal with a customer complaint? But creativity is often left to happen by chance. It happens, it's supposed to happen in the shadows. Like when do you sit down and say, okay, I'm gonna schedule two hours to be creative? It doesn't often happen. So I felt that there was a burning need in the business world for a proven system to build creativity. So I did a bunch of research and wrote a book about it. It's called Disciplined Dreaming, which is a proven system to drive breakthrough creativity. And in preparing for the book, I not only drew on my own entrepreneurial experiences and jazz experiences, of course, but I also uh, researched uh, quite a bit. So I interviewed 200 thought leaders. I interviewed artists, musicians, billionaires, CEOs, entrepreneurs, nonprofit leaders, and tried to boil all this information down into like a really simple, easy to follow process. So I'm gonna share with you that process today and give you some things again that you can take out immediately and put to use. So the system goes like this. There's five simple steps. The first one is ask. And in ask, what you're doing is you're sort of identifying the creative challenge. What are you directing your creativity towards? And you're awakening your curiosity and awareness. You're getting ready to create. The next step is one of preparation, where you're preparing your mind, your physical surroundings, and in fact, your culture of your organization to bring out maximum creativity. Step three is discover. And in Discover, what you're doing is you're looking under the rocks. You're finding creativity in the places that it hides. Step four is the fun part, Ignite, where you're bringing out proven brainstorming techniques that will really unleash your creativity. And step five, which is often overlooked, is a launch phase in which you've got all these great ideas on the board, but how do you choose the best ones? How do you winnow out and find the ones that are going to make the most difference in your organization? And then how do you put them into action? Okay, we're gonna fast forward to the fun part, which is Ignite. And here's some proven techniques that you can use right away to bring out ideas. The first one I'd like to share is called edge storming. We've all heard of brainstorming, right? 
Edstorming is like brainstorming, but taking your ideas to the furthest possible extreme. In other words, what's the absolute loudest I can go with this? What's the quietest? What's the most expensive? What's the least expensive? How can I take my idea all the way to the edge? And by forcing yourself to take an idea all the way to the edge, you break through barriers that could be holding you back. Now, you might end up with crazy ideas, and sure, you can always scale them back to reality, but by forcing yourself all the way to the extremes, you really have a tool to unleash creativity. Cirque du Soleil did that. They didn't say, okay, I'm going to start a circus, I'm going to compete with Barnum and Bailey, the entrenched leader, and I'm going to make things 11% better. I'm going to have one extra elephant in the circus. I'm going to do incremental improvements. Of course not. They broke the mold. They said, I'm going to introduce the arts and theater and music and dance and all these things. Today, Cirque du Soleil is a billion dollar company. Barnum and Bailey filed for bankruptcy. Average ticket price for Cirque du Soleil shows, for, which are continuously sold out, is three times that of the Barnum and Bailey Circus. They edge stormed their way all the way to success. Next one I'd like to share with you is called the long list. I was studying advertising in college, and a teacher gave us an assignment. It said, break into groups, and we want you to come up with headlines for our product. We're like, cool, no problem. Until she said, don't come back until you have 200 headlines. So I was like, oh, God, 200 headlines? Are you kidding me? So we went back in our groups, and here's what happened. The first 20 were the obvious easy ones. That's where most people stop. Then came the silly ones, and the goofy ones, and the inappropriate ones, and the bizarre ones, and the really off-color ones. And so we all got back together, and our groups had to present our best ideas to the rest of the class. None of the group's best ideas were like idea number 4, or 11, or 13. The ones that were the winners were 196, or 172, or 169. The quantity produced better quality, because it forced us away from the easy, obvious answers, and got us into new territory, that new territory of creativity. The opposite. Fellow Detroiter Tony Sosnick came to me in 1999 and said, Josh, I'm going to start a cosmetics company. I was like, all right, that's kind of cool. He goes, but here's the thing. It's going to be for men. I said, for men? He said, Josh, if I started a cosmetics company for women, I'd have like the 174th mover advantage. For men, no one's doing it. There's a wide open market. People will buy aftershave and hair care products and tanning stuff specifically for men. It's a great gift, etc. So, of course, I told him, don't do it. <laughs> and I was completely wrong because today he's got the largest men's cosmetics company in the world. He's in thousands of outlets worldwide. A tremendous success story. And all because he did the exact opposite of conventional wisdom. Here's how you can put it to action. Again, it's a simple technique, but it really is powerful. If you're faced with a business challenge, think about all the ways that you normally take that challenge on. List them out. Then say, all right, what are all the ways that my competitors do it? What are all the conventional wisdom ways of doing it? What's the status quo? And then force yourself to literally look at exactly the opposite of every one of those. You may end up with 30 ideas on the page, and 27 of them might be completely stupid and undoable. But three might be gems. So it's a really powerful way, again, to get through finding new, powerful ideas. The last one I want to share with you today is called the hot potato. Here's what happened. We did an innovation offsite at ePrize one time. And we carefully researched this for months. We brought 30 of our top leaders offsite. And we said, all right, we're going to really come up with great ideas. So we spent the day doing all kinds of formal academic exercises that, you know, we, we, and we did. We came up with some good stuff.